Hunters, The Mysterious Moonstone. Chapter 13. I, I didn't know such thing, Beatrice shrieked. She placed the back of her hand on her forehead, lay down across the long sofa, and fanned herself with her handkerchief. There, Cleo said, pointing at the clock. It's the same glue you had in your bedroom. I can see it around the edge of the diamond. She grabbed a spoon from the broken tea set, climbed up next to Evan, and carefully pried the gemstone from the face of the clock. You left your room at eight, replaced the stone on the clock with the Musgrave Moonstone, and used the ladder to climb down to the kitchen. Your handkerchief protected your hand from getting scraped. Once there, you dropped the stone from the clock into the soup. You insisted on Chef Lilith's famous tomato soup for your wedding, Evan said. That's because it's hard to see a red stone in red soup. Tomato, garlic, and basil soup, Chef Lilith corrected her, holding up her giant spoon. It's famous. Your plan might have worked if you knew more about fake gems, Artie said. Fake gems float. It was Richard, Beatrice said. I heard him say that acquiring the gem is the most important thing in his life. I was speaking to your father about you, my little emerald, Cunningham said. This is too much for me to handle, Beatrice cried. I'm too fragile. Cleo and Evan hopped down. Colonel Musgrave crossed the hallway and took his daughter's hand. Dearest Beatrice, he said, is it true? Did you plan this theft? Cunningham dropped to his knee beside Beatrice. Were you never planning to marry me, my fluffy monkey? He asked. You look nothing like the photograph you sent, Beatrice said. Anyhow, we both know this marriage is more about my father's company than about me. Plus, the mosquitoes in South Africa are larger than a house cat. Beatrice began to weep into her handkerchief. Evan noticed a piece of it was torn off. Look! Evan said. He held up the scrap of fabric they found on the rope ladder. It's a perfect fit. It was Worthington's idea, Beatrice cried. He said no one would be hurt. He said the insurance company would pay Daddy for the lost diamond and we would sell the moonstone and be happy together. This is absurd, Worthington said, sneering. The worst detective on the London police force and two brats figuring out my plans? I was supposed to be on my way to America by now. America? Beatrice wailed. You told me to meet you on the ship to Italy. Worthington's face twitched. Plans changed, Bunny. He lunged across the hallway and snatched the Musgrave Moonstone. Worthington turned to run, but Watson snapped his teeth onto the banker's pants and snarled. Evan and Cleo grabbed hold of his arms. But Worthington's pulled free of them all. Whack! That's when Chef Lilith conked him on the head with her giant spoon. Worthington dropped to the floor, dazed. One boat ticket to America fell from his pocket. Kumar clutched Worthington's jacket. The only trip you'll be taking is to jail, he said. I've always wanted to say that, Artie said, disappointed. Feel free, Kumar said. Artie turned to Worthington and opened his mouth to speak. He exhaled. Well, now you've taken all the fun out of it, he said. Why don't you find the fun in putting on the handcuffs, Evan said. Grand idea, Artie said. He pulled out a set of iron handcuffs and snapped them on Worthington's wrists. The only banking you'll be doing, Artie paused is banking in jail. That made no sense, Evan said. Yes, I'll have to work on that, Artie said. In the meantime, I'll send word to Chief Rutherford that this crime has been solved. Watson woofed. Cleo clapped. Your job is saved, he said. It looks that way. Artie began emptying his pockets. He pulled out a sealed purple envelope and handed it to Cleo. Give me a moment while I find the key to the handcuffs. The key? Evan and Cleo glanced at each other. After loading most of a table with loose change, scraps of paper, and dog treats, 
Artie finally pulled out a thin chain. A silver chain with swirling designs dangled from it. He held it out to the kids. Hold this for me, Artie said. I don't want to lose it. Do you mind if I hold it as well? Chef Lilith said. I've always been interested in police work. Certainly, Artie said. Evan, Cleo, and Chef Lilith grabbed the chain. Letters burst from the key like a thousand crazy spiders. The letters tumbled in the air around them and began to spell words. The words became sentences. The sentences, paragraphs. Before long, they could barely see. And then everything went black. Chapter 14 Wake up, Miss Crowley snapped. Evan opened his eyes and lifted his head from the table. Cleo was sitting across from him. She must have dozed off too. Plain wooden shelves surrounded them. The poster explaining the Dewey Decimal System hung on the wall behind the checkout desk. They were back in their school. Evan glanced at the clock. Only 55 minutes had passed. Miss Crowley loomed over them. You're here to do your work, not to nap, she barked. Now gather your things, recess is over. Evan wiped a string of drool from his cheek. You're... You're not wearing that crazy suit, Cleo said to him. You remember that, Evan said. Cleo leaned across the table to whisper, Two people can't be in the same dream, can they? I don't think so, Evan said. The bell rang. Go, Miss Crowley began to tap her foot. I have a kindergarten read aloud in five minutes. Evan slung his backpack onto his shoulders. Miss Crowley... Do you like watching cooking shows on television? Stop talking nonsense, Miss Crowley said, and stop burying your nose in all these books. They'll rot your brain. But as they passed her into the hallway, Evan could swear he smelled tomato soup. Kids began to fill the hallway as they came in from the playground. What do we do now? Cleo asked. Do we go on as though we didn't just solve a major crime? I'm not sure, Evan said. He felt a lump in his pocket. He reached in and pulled out a thin chain. A small silver key hung from it. Evan's eyes brightened and he showed the key to Cleo. Cleo patted her pockets and pulled out a purple envelope. She tore it open. Evan, if you're reading this letter, I'm proud of you. In my last note, I warned you that you were too fragile, but only someone who loves stories as you do would have found the lost library. I know telling you to go no further would be a waste of time, but please use caution. I hope you brought a friend along. The case of the mysterious Moonstone is nothing compared to the challenges to come. I'm not sure which librarian took my place at school, but not all of them are kind. Some may try to use the lost library for evil. Be wary. Your friend and librarian, Miss Sandy Hilliard. If it didn't happen to me, I would never believe it, Evan said. It did happen to us, and I still don't believe it, Cleo said. They walked down the hallway towards their next class. I do know one thing, Evan said. What? Cleo asked. I'm going back to the library tomorrow, he said. We need to find Miss Hilliard and stop Miss Crowley from whatever she's up to. Cleo grinned. See you there, Sherlock. <laughs>